Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, December 22nd. 8.45 p.m. Mountain Time 2023. There is a major shift in the models as we head into the new year. It is looking like we could have some epic results. Take a look at the system moving through the east. We're also keeping a close eye on Bartabunga as there is an uptick there and a 3.5 magnitude at the Caldera. Plus, keeping a close eye on Iceland. Keep calm. It's boom time. Storms combining forces will bring slippery snow to the Rockies and High Plains over the Christmas weekend. Sleds may be pre the preferred method of transportation in the days before Christmas as a storm brings plowable snow to about a half a dozen states, all but ensuring a white Christmas in the Rockies and the High Plains. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! Al Gore is not happy with the forecast. California ski resorts look to the latest storm for snow to help kick off the season, a season of please, and we'll have the full forecast and snow totals coming up in just a minute. South Sioux City issuing a snow emergency. Hello, Nebraska, with the possibility of snow coming Christmas Day and into the day after. Officials in South Sioux City, Nebraska, are issuing a snow emergency ahead of time. And South Dakota, it looks like a big one. So stay tuned for the forecast. Weekend snow may deliver a white Christmas to Boulder County. Heads up, Colorado. And winter storm will bring rain and snow to Arizona. Several weather alerts have been issued. Here's the forecast. Heavy rainfall for portions of the southwest, accumulating snow for the southern Rockies. Above normal temperatures for the east like a beast, but that's going to end after the new year. The storm impacting southern California will move inland across the Four Corners region today. It's pouring right now as the temperature is dropping. Heavy rainfall and potential for flash flooding are in the forecast, along with the accumulating snow for the highest terrain locations. As this storm tracks east this weekend, rain and thunderstorms for the eastern plains and Mississippi Valley, snow for the western high plains, and gusty winds are expected. So let's take a look at the GFS model and break it down. Here we go. Here is Saturday into Sunday morning. That snow is going to explode over the Four Corners region in Arizona and New Mexico and Utah, as well as the northern Rockies. Some minor lake effect snow in the northeast, especially in upstate New York and Vermont, you can see there. Here is Sunday into Monday. That is Christmas Eve through Christmas morning. That's when the system's going to explode up in Nebraska. And at the same time, take a look over here, there will be heavy rain down in a stripe here, as well as severe weather in the southeast for Christmas Eve into Christmas morning. Now, Christmas morning, the snow is going to develop behind the back of that storm and bomb out by Christmas. So the end of Christmas Day, take a look at the system developing the day after Christmas for North and South Dakota, maybe Minnesota, 26 inches or more for some areas potentially. And that brings us into the new year here. And we have some a major system forecast to come through the central east coast of the most. Take a look at that. This is not a nor'easter. It's a strange trending storm, which could bring some record-breaking snow as the new year shifts the pattern. How do you like them apples? Seismic update. No quakes of note. We did have a moderate rumbler on the s in south of Africa on the mid-ocean ridge there north of Antarctica. M6.1. We do have some increased activity in the Caribbean here, specifically north of the Dominican Republic, which was all kicked off by a 5.3 at 65 kilometers depth. Bad news is that all these aftershocks are deep or none of them are on the surface, so we could be seeing some enhanced activity here over the next 24 hours. Keep a close eye on that area for you guys. No other quakes of note worldwide brings us to the Iceland earthquake watch. A flurry of activity earlier today as a result of more uh, inflation at the volcano. We'll get to that in a minute. There was also a flurry of activity at Bartabunga. Now, typically when fissure eruptions occur on the Reykjanes Ridge in historical context back in the 1300s, other large volcanoes go off like maybe Hekla or Ostia or Bartabunga, where we're seeing activity now. So could be more bad news for the continent of Iceland uh, and air travel as we keep a close eye on what's going on on Iceland. 
There has been uplift. Magma is starting to gather again under Svartsvengi. The rise is about five to seven millimeters per day. According to Civil Defense, they will meet to review the situation today, so we will get an update on that. So even though the eruption has stopped, the uplift continues, and we have multiple sources confirming that. So this eruption is not over. This is when the last eruption began here, a spike in the seismic tremor. We're not seeing that, but we're keeping a close eye on all the telemetry at Kreischewick and Grindavik so that we'll know exactly the moment of inception. And we'll come take a look over here at the four live streams going on, the multi-view from live from Iceland. Give them a thumbs up there. This is where you're going to get the breaking news when the next eruption occurs. Worldwide Volcano News Update, we have Marapi Spectacular with an A, not with an E. Spectacular eruption creating billowing ash plumes. This was the VEI-4 that happened about a week ago, went up to 55,000 feet, and it is puffing today. 18,000, 16,000, and another puff to 17,000 just moments ago. Popo to 21, Fuego to 16, San Gael as well puffing today, Santo Huito to 15,000 feet, Ducono, 8,000 foot puff, Ibu puffing to 10,000. And that wraps up the Woltolol. Also today, we have Volcanic Ash Advisory. My own puffing the 8,000 feet. And very active. Here's another puff, 18,000 for Malapi with an A. Hey, hey, Space Weather News Update. The sun has gone quiet over the last 24 hours with the X-ray flux dipping all the way down into Nothingville. Right, currently right now at C, 1.1. A few solar flares coming from a departing sunspot did create a coronal mass ejection, which is now headed away from the Earth. So there is no likelihood of uh, enhanced solar activity for the next three days. We will be in psychic territory. KP is at 0.5, which means tomorrow morning, if you have clear skies, it'll probably look like chemtrails. It'll be a chemtraily day, but it's simply contrails, persistent contrails due to high cosmic ray flux. If we get down to zero, we'll be psychic, and it's a good day to die. You'll have a near-death experience if you wake back up. <laughs> now, defying physics. Forbidden emissions from a spiral galaxy. More forbidden things. Well, and it's all thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, which is blowing minds and doubling the age of the universe. Have you heard that news? Well, if not, Google it. In a striking discovery... Uh, here it is. This is images from the Hubble Space Telescope featuring MCG 0124014, which is a spiral galaxy located 275 million light years away. It's pretty close, not, but it it's an, has an active galactic nucleus, which is an AGN, categorizing it as a type 2 Seifert galaxy. Seifert galaxies often nearer to Earth compared to quasars, are distinguished by their unique spectra, particularly their forbidden emissions in type 2 Seiferts, like this one. It looks like a normal spiral galaxy, but it has an extremely energetic center that means that probably nothing lives in this galaxy. Thank God we don't have that galaxy. Three, these cities and towns are the most dangerous in the U.S., according to a new study. And if you live here and... Well, and if the shit hits the fan, you're going to be in a bad way, so you better have a bug-out plan, if you, especially, number one, Birmingham, Alabama, the most dangerous city to live in. Number two, New Orleans, Louisiana, get out of Dodge, have a bug-out plan, St. Louis, Missouri, number three. Number four, Detroit, I thought that would have topped the list. Number five, Memphis. Number six, Baltimore. Number seven, Little Rock. Number eight, Cleveland, Ohio. Number nine, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Number 10, Kansas City, Missouri. Number 11, Pueblo, Colorado. That is just two, three hours from here. And Ben Davidson's survival ranch is, I think, seven miles away. So very stupid planning there. Now, what's not stupid is our planning with bringing Ashton Forbes on for the second time over at Magnetic Reversal News. The interview is already over, and if you missed it, it'll be linked right after this video. Go check it out. It is the MH370 mystery, which continues. It has not been debunked. The disappearance of Malaysian Flight 370 still appears to be quite nefarious, and we discuss it all in the interview. Remember when died suddenly was when someone got hit by a bus or something? Yeah. And that's a boom to knowledge. 
please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. We're going to have some holiday specials coming up, including our radio show tomorrow with Leah and Ransom from Mountain High Time. We love each and every one of you. I hope you're all enjoying the holidays. Have a happy and wonderful holiday and be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.